What do you build on a former cattle feedlot? Why, a grass tennis court, of course. Like many Iowa farmers, Mark Kuhn's day begins with chores. There's mowing, rolling the grounds, and applying painted stripes. Okay, this is a working farm, but by now you can tell this isn't a typical to-do list. With advice from Iowa State University turf specialist, Mark, a former state legislator, brought one of his passions to life. In 2002, he built a grass tennis court where his family's cattle feedlot once stood. It wasn't easy. The soil here grows corn very well, but it doesn't grow bent grass. We hauled in a lot of very sandy soil and put it on top of the feedlot and then leveled it off, uh, installed drainage lines, tile, about every 12 feet. There are five tile lines that drain the court. We put in a sprinkler system and uh, leveled it off and seeded it. How did you develop your passion for tennis and Wimbledon-style lawn tennis in particular? Well, uh, lawn tennis was my first introduction to the game, listening on the BBC with my grandfather. And so I had an early idea of what it was about. In 2012, Mark and his wife got to see the famed British landmark firsthand. After receiving three rejection letters, he was accepted as a grounds crew intern at the All England Lawn Tennis Club, just prior to the Wimbledon Tennis Championships. While there, he met a few of the players during their practice sessions. He also was introduced to Rufus, the hawk that patrols center court to keep the pigeons at bay. He says much of the court care he learned in England will be applied to improve his own court. Still, thanks to Mark, we can get the Wimbledon experience here in Iowa. The Union Jack flag flies, and the court is even named after the All England Club. He says he built this court for himself and friends. But guests, who are required to make reservations at this private court, have come from 36 states and a couple of foreign countries to play on one of the few grass courts in America. Some even fly into the airport in Charles City. Thank you. You guys look the part here. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. There, don't yeah. This foursome flew in from the Quad Cities, all dressed in the traditional white clothing required at Wimbledon. After posing for the camera, they were whisked off to the farm and wasted no time in getting on the grass court. I started playing tennis uh, the year I went into high school, probably, what, 60-some years ago. 10 or 11 years ago, I was voted into the Iowa Tennis Hall of Fame also. But I've always wanted to play on a grass court, never have, and it's, it's great. I enjoy it very much. First time on grass, and um, it, it's really um, it's really different. You got to move your feet, similar to clay. It's it's got a lot of class and ambiance that uh, is a pleasant surprise. The detail from the fences to the grass to the just the uh, warm hospitality is really uh, really cool. This is like a tennis player's field of dreams. Uh, it's right out here in the in between the the cornfields and a uh, grass court. Couldn't be better. It's, it's uh, few and far between when we ever get to play on a grass court. The players spent several hours here and took frequent breaks during this hot summer day. That one, there you go. During one of their breaks, I asked Mark to give me a few pointers about playing on a grass court. Of course, we both change into our whites, which I hope will help my game. If I look the part, maybe I'll play better. It's a softer surface and the balls stay low. They don't bounce as high, and, uh, but from a player's perspective, it's uh, comforting. Uh, it's very easy on the legs. Uh, it, uh, it, you can play here longer, I think. The, uh, the sun's heat is kind of absorbed by the grass. It isn't reflected back at you like it would be on a normal hard court. And it's just a joy here. OK, I've chased enough tennis balls for one day. It's time to let the Quad City visitors have the court back. I have just as much fun watching them from the deck, or the royal box, as they call it at Wimbledon. Dan, we thought we'd uh, serve a little bit of the Wimbledon tradition treat here. Here's some wow. fresh strawberries and cream. And that is a Wimbledon tradition? Yes, they serve it during the championships. This dessert isn't offered to every visitor, but it is a touch of Wimbledon tradition. 
Meanwhile, back on the court, Mark's other guests can't seem to get enough games in. It's a nice day, a nice little breeze take, take away the big heat, and uh, couldn't be prettier, so we're really thankful for Mark that uh, he let us come up here and play today. If this foursome has the energy and desire after their game, there's a place just a few miles from here to go cool off. Charles City offers up Iowa's first whitewater course, built on the Cedar River. The city modified an existing low-flow dam and used heavy equipment to bring in large rocks to set the water's flow. Tubers, kayakers, and even experienced canoeists can maneuver around the rocks and through the waves at three distinct whitewater sections of the river but you can choose to bypass the challenge and float the same section on a less turbulent chute on river left. And there is a third choice. If you prefer to just watch the action, there's plenty of green space with some spectator seating at River's Edge. 